Holy smoking Toledos. I went in on trying to figure out audio latency for synth and MIDI, not clock information. I have too many videos on that already. I've banged my head enough against the wall on that situation, but on MIDI information. And I think I got to the bottom of it. So bare bones, straight up, there's really only two solutions that I have found that give you zero to almost no latency. The first one being, you just gotta freeze and flatten your track if you're using the external instrument plugin. So in this scenario here, I use the external instrument being sent to the pro, you know what, let me put this in geezer mode real quick. Um, is that too big? Ah, that kind of works, you, you get the idea. So MIDI 2 Pro 3, audio from what the Pro 3 is plugged into, very simple setup. For the clips, I just sent a quarter note, dead on the money, to the synth and back. And I wanted to see how much latency there was and how I can avoid dealing with latency issues. So straight up, the solution, freeze and flatten your external instrument tracks when you are ready to, but this is heavily reliant on your audio driver error compensation. And there's a bunch of ways to do this. There's a bunch of videos on how to do this. And the easiest way is actually, if you just go to your help, help view, scroll down, show all built-in lessons. And here you have driver error compensation. And you just gotta load this set and then click next. And it will actually take you through the process of figuring it out. Weirdly though, I did that to a T and I still had issues. So what was weird was by freezing and flattening my external instrument plugins, I still had latency and I have the proof right here. Look at that. This, it was supposed to be here and I have about two milliseconds worth of latency. But after I went back and fixed my driver error compensation, so I did that test thing, got it basically down to none, saw that I still had two milliseconds, I went into my driver error compensation and actually pushed it up by another millisecond and it brought it all back to this. Look at this right here, fixed driver error compensation. Ba-boom, son. If anything, it might be a little early, you see this arrow, but that is like so, t not even a millisecond, it's registering. So have a play with that. That will get you right on the money to freeze and flatten your um, external instrument tracks to avoid latency altogether. But let me tell you something else. I hate doing that. I, I cannot stand it. And I think it's really, really boring to freeze and flatten stuff because I prefer to play things in. Let me get rid of all these, uh, these meters. So what I prefer to do, and this is the way that I've been doing it for a while, I guess just accidentally I came across this method or this way, but it's also the second solution in how to avoid error compensation altogether. And that is to have a separate MIDI channel and a separate audio channel listening to where that MIDI is being sent to, which synth, right? So in this case, it's input 1516, the Pro 3, and our MIDI is being sent to the Pro 3. Funnily enough though, I was still messing up in this sense because if I just go through these, look, monitor in and monitor auto, they're a little late still. You can see that right there. But if I go to monitor off, it's dead on the money. So monitor off and the external instrument frozen and flattened would be basically zero latency if your driver error compensation is set appropriately. If your driver error compensation is set badly or just not well, stop making music. Fix that right now and follow that thing and then go in and fine tune it a little bit. The way I like to fine tune this thing is I, again, just send quarter note, MIDI notes right on the money to my synth, no swing, nothing, record it in and see what's happening. For example, I wanted to see how much external instrument was actually handling for me and what it was doing. So dead on the money, look at its audio tracks. Look how far early they are for monitor off, monitor auto and monitor in, in auto off, in auto off. And this makes sense because monitor off, it's it's not processing anything, it's going straight in, so it's technically a little earlier. Auto and in are a little later. You see how they move a little bit? Right, one or two. I feel like this is a optometrist video. What do you prefer? One, two, one, two, two or three, two 
or three. Oh, three. Three is the move. So what I prefer to do and my favorite solution for handling stuff like this, because there's a lot of videos on this already, right? And I just am a nerd and wanted to really figure out what was happening, run some tests, have a control, and just figure out what the heck is going on with audio latency. I even froze, fro froze and flattened the external instrument plugin with monitoring in, monitoring set to auto and uh, off. And I found out you can't freeze it when it's set to off. So I just went way too far with this. But let's say you don't like freezing and flattening, right? Because I don't, I absolutely hate it. It sucks for so many reasons because you can't record automation. It, you have to stop everything you're doing. You can't just grab a little segment. And then the weirdest thing is like, if you have one bar loop and then you freeze it and flatten it, it records a two bar loop. I'm like, what the heck, what, huh? So my favorite solution is the separate MIDI track with the MIDI, with the MIDI information here, and then a separate audio track recording the synthesizer playing. And I usually set it to in, but as I realized, I've been screwing myself over because in gives me latency. Sorry, Spotify. Sorry, listeners. I didn't know there was, you know, seven milliseconds of latency in my tracks. Nobody's told me yet. Uh, my whole world has been shattered. Oops, my bad. But what you can do here, and this is what I used to do, is let's say, let's just do this from scratch, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and color this one. Uh, we'll just color it, we'll color it this nice little orange. So I'm gonna go back to this track. If I press play here, that's the Pro 3 playing. And this is set to monitor in, right? I'm gonna go here, turn this on, lower this a little bit, record arm this. Oh, our external instrument's also playing. So I'm gonna record this and let's just see where we're at. So it missed one, weird. Okay, cool, right? We go and look at our track. I don't count the first one because it's everything's kind of catching up. If I zoom into this, I can see here immediately, I have about 11 milliseconds of latency. And this latency is because this MIDI track is sending MIDI information to the synth. The synth is pressing that note. The audio is going into my interface and then being recorded into this track. And all of that is causing 11 milliseconds of delay. You can fix this. There's a little D over here, right there. Track delay. You can delay the track by a X amount of latency. So I'll say minus 11 milliseconds of latency. And because this is an internal Ableton Live MIDI track, it knows to start 11 milliseconds before the actual track plays. This means when I press spacebar, there might be an 11 millisecond delay between me pressing this and then it actually running. So now that we have 11 milliseconds laid in here, let's go and record another track and see what happens. So if we stop this now, we can zoom all the way into this. Boom, holy smokes. That is more on than I thought it was going to be. I thought I nailed it with that audio driver compensation thing here, but that was slightly early. So this is the way that I've been doing it for a long time, is I'll just say track delay move it over a little bit. But it's important to remember that MIDI track delay is for note information only. I cannot say that enough. This is for note information only, not clock information. If you're running MIDI to a sequencer, like an Octatrack or an analog rhythm or a Volca FM or something, that is not handled by this. This is delaying the tracks played information towards something else, in this case, the Pro 3. If you want to handle clock information, that is here under MIDI ports and the output. Here you can delay the MIDI clock sync delay. And in the same way that I recorded this audio, I would go onto a sequencer, put in like a kick drum or a hi-hat on the quarter notes, record it in, see how far it is by measuring it like this. You see the waveform, you see how far it's off, minus six. You go into here and you set this to minus six or plus six if it's early, very rare if that's the case. Strange, but it, this is where you fix your clock information. So again, 
to wrap it up so we don't leave here feeling like we haven't learned anything because this is confusing. And I think the thing that sucks is there's so many different ways to solve and deal with latency within Ableton Live, but they don't do it for you, which causes even more confusion because then people are left to, I mean, this is so dramatic, but fend for themselves when figuring this stuff out. And the worst part about it is there's not, there's no like really easy ways to do it. I mean, it's, it's current year, you know, like this stuff should in a way handle itself. And in a sense, that is what the external instrument stuff does, but oh boy, but you still need to make sure that your driver error compensation is set correctly because right now, Overall latency is 7.73 milliseconds. I used to try and move this to make sure that it said as close to zero as possible. Uh -uh. That is not at all what you want to do. I think this is the overall spec of your, inter your audio interface's latency. Okay, wrap it up, Enrique. Let's get the hell out of here. Freeze and flatten your external instrument plugins. If you're an external instrument plugin user and you like using that, congratulations. You've been doing it right this whole time. Freeze and flatten that bad boy and you're good to go. You won't have any latency issues. Number two, freeze. Uh, No, 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 not freeze. Number two, send MIDI to your synthesizer using an external, uh, using, oh boy, I am confusing myself. Okay, hold on, hold on. Solution number two, have a separate MIDI track, sending MIDI information to your synthesizer. Have a separate audio track listening to that synthesizer and set its monitoring to off if you're not gonna mess with track delay. But that brings up the problem of not being able to hear your synth. So what you can do, you can either duplicate this, have one set to off and record into that track and only listen with this track or do what I do, set your track delay, have the MIDI track, set your delay once, have the audio track, label them appropriately, right? Pro 3 MIDI, and then we'll do Pro 3 audio. Ah, oh, come on, bro. And then you can just go ahead, file, and save this as a default set. That way it loads up with the track delay and everything. You can group these, do whatever you want. And I prefer this over freezing and flattening because this allows me to go in and perform some automation with the track as a whole versus soloing and kind of doing everything one at a time weirdly with some extra weird tails. And it just feels a little uncontrolled for my taste. But um, yeah, hope, hope you learned something. Seriously, this is... This is confusing. I mean, again, I wish there was an easier way to do this, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you hanging out. It's always good to see you. And until next week, I uh, hope to see you again. And you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.